two true stars in college basketball going head to head. And here we are for the opening tip. We are underway as it is batted toward the Hokies bench. And the Hokies will have the basketball as we get started. Great to have you with us. NCAA tournament round one in the Spokane region. Here's Baines up high beyond that three point line. They're a very tough defensive team, Virginia Tech, as well. They hold opponents just 58 a game. Well, you see Florida Gulf Coast here starting at a man to man. And they're sagging up the line. You can see they're playing off of some players, but they are tight on others. Great game planning. Shot clock down to six as Kitley swings in, and she will draw the whistle. Kitley at 6'6", six, six, and an awful lot to handle. Virginia Tech, here's the Capital One starting lineups for the Hokies. By the way, 0-3 all-time against Florida Gulf Coast. They haven't met since 2012. Asia Shepard, a second team all ACC, averaging 13 again. Amore at 11 points a game, trailer at 11. All in double figures for Virginia Tech. Well, they just really create such a great dynamic around Kitley because they have the three point shooters, they can penetrate and kick, but at 6 6, they, she is just tough to stop. 10 boards a game as well as her offensive prowess with 17 a game. Bell with a touch up high for Morehouse. She averages 15 a game and also about four and a half assists for the Eagles. A long one on the way, and the first triple will not fall by list. They also defend the three pointer particularly well. They hold opponents about 28% outside the line. And that's what they need to do today. It's going to be a battle of who can defend the three point line the best because both teams, you know, are going to let it fly from there. Kitley a little following. That's going to be interesting to watch as we give you the Florida Gulf Coast starting lineup. Led by Bell, of course. Spray, one of the great shooters in America. Swished in here by List. The senior out of Colorado Springs. They get ready for a whole lot of that today. Absolutely. The lefty let it fly. And that's what Florida Gulf Coast wants to do. They want to kill you from their attempts from the outside. But Kenny Brooks said they want to lull you to sleep by taking all those threes. They're one of the best two-point field goal percentage teams in the country. Yeah, a lot just, of layups. Just under 44% for them. Indeed. Bell will pull up and bounce outside for Spray, who's made 460 three-point shots in a great career. Bell rolling inside. They run the play for her, and she gets the first two-pointer of her day. And that's what we're talking about. That's what Kenny Brooks was saying. We don't want to fall asleep thinking, okay, we just have to deal with their three-point shooting prowess. They can get loose and score at the rim as well. That mid-range, not so much. Shepard with scoop shot, very tough angle, couldn't get it to go, but a rebound comes right back to her. She dishes inside for Kitley and two. It's probably the easiest bucket Kitley's going to get all afternoon. Got to break plays to make plays, Warhouse. though. Oh, what a pretty play, and flipped it up over her head. Talk about a difficult angle. And right away, you're seeing the game of the Eagles inside and outside, and how they can be such an offensive force. Well, Virginia Tech, they said they cannot allow for Morehouse to get downhill like that because she is so crafty and creative with her offensive decisions. But well, so is Kirsten Bell. She is tremendous. Here comes the screen and roll, two-man game action, and she's right at the rim. Kitley not there on that weak side to contest it. And then there's Morehouse getting downhill. The whirling dervish gets that really crafty reversal to go incidentally number two on kirsten bell upset about that she goes to the bench the star for florida gulf coast quickly has to go to the bench and this is a major development in this game and that is just unfortunate because everything goes through her she did miss those nine games with a partially torn meniscus in her knee but they need her on the court whether or not she gets a touch is irrelevant to some extent because with her presence on the floor the defense morphs in different ways this thought about the triple is it off for C who can hit it out there here's Phils with a misfire and a Hokies have it and back to the point as we were chatting a moment ago about Kitley and that shoulder injury 
I thought when she hit the floor going after a loose ball, her thought was, I have separated my shoulder, my season's over. You wonder if that's going to affect her at all today, and a nice move off the glass here by Amor to drop in two. Well, Kitley, you know, it's hard to turn the motor off. When you see the basketball on the floor, you want to go and get it, and someone fell right on top of her in that North Carolina game in the ACC tournament, and she did not play against NC State in the semifinals of that time. Her only game to miss on the collegiate level. You know, Kenny Brooks said it was really the first time we ever argued about anything. Baines flips it up and in for two. Zona Baines, a 6'1 junior out of Blackwood, New Jersey, and she has four. Three-pointer, that's going to rattle in. Florida Gulf Coast will make a living on those. This one by C, the LSU transfer. See a 37% shooter from out there. I mean, all players for Florida Gulf Coast have the ability to knock in shots. C involved in the contact there and a whistle with 5.50 to go here in the first and tied up 10-10. Well, what Florida Gulf Coast loves to do, they love to penetrate and kick out for those threes. So you're going to guard heavy up the line. You're going to pack that paint because you don't want someone to get loose. But you've got to be really quick in your show and go defensive coverage against this team or they will make you pay. Well, Bell is back in. Houston Bell back on the floor here for the Eagles of Florida Gulf Coast. As Morehouse lifts and cannot hit. And a rebound torn down by Gray. Virginia Tech 23 and 9. And a quick strike on the other end. The Hokies can do that. Well, when you don't stop the ball in transition, which is something Carl Semesco said they needed to do. That's going to happen. You've got to get back and not just be back, but be ready to play some defense back there. All the way through and laid in by Trailer, the Purdue transfer of the senior, who has scored over a thousand points in her career. You can see why very quick end to end. The trainer's just so tough minded. She's such a staunch competitor when it comes to her defensive abilities, number one, but she is tough offensively. Bell rolling inside, one of the country's best players. And an honorable mention All-American, 26 career double-doubles in a tremendous career. And she just said that she wanted to go into the WNBA draft, and the trust that Carl Semesco has in putting her back in with those two fouls, that's good to see as well. It'll go the other way after the tie-up. Well, this game, we knew it was going to be an offensive show of wares. Kirsten Bell right there, and Trailer. Not trailing on that one. Got that one to go in transition. Carl Semesco has done an incredible job at Florida Gulf Coast. 609 wins, winning percentage of over 820. That is third among active coaches behind Gino Oriema and Kim Mulkey. And there he is on the list all time. 827. How amazing is that? What a run. We shared time here as assistant coaches at Maryland. Shared an office. And he'd left to go to Florida Gulf Coast, a great opportunity, and now 609 wins later, just a tremendous career. How was he as an office mate? Was he a messy guy? Did he leave coffee everywhere? I mean, what was he like? <laughs> that was me. No, he was very good. <laughs> no, he was he was tremendous as a, as a colleague. He was a great teammate. And just the same. He is just always even keeled. You never yeah. see him too high, too low. He's always going to bring you his best effort. And it's all about team. And we saw that in their practice yesterday. Inside for Kitley. Florida Gulf Coast, by the way, two for eight from three point land. Virginia Tech has surged into the lead 16 to 12. They're not going to stop shooting those. Cox with a miss. She's only making 20%. That's a really good shooter. Last year, 37%. Something's gone wrong this year. Right, and, you know, they have really done a good job with giving confidence to players like that who have struggled this season with their shooting. And Carl Semesco sat her down, showed her highlights of her shooting the ball really well. Said, you're going to have slumps, but you got to fight through those. Yeah, got to remember what it was like, and that one's going to rattle in by Phils. 5'9 grad out of Charlotte. So they are now three for nine beyond a three-point stripe. Keep an eye on Kirsten Bell with those two fouls early in this game. She has to be tremendously disciplined defensively, and they know she has those two, and they're taking it right at her. Greg went right at her indeed. 
could not get that bucket. But it's a roll of the dice. There's no question about that. Another triple coming and off the back iron. And a rebound hauled in by Lytle. I mean, you have your superstar on the floor playing with two and just hoping against hope. Well, you have to roll the dice sometimes and just trust the discipline of your players. And that is not an easy task for coaches to do. But give Carl Semesco some kudos on that. Trailer on the baseline can't get that one to go. Well, Carl told us yesterday he's really recruited, you know, high basketball IQ kind of players, and Bell certainly fits right in with that. He says he looks for those kids who aren't going to pick up the third foul. And coming up next on ESPNU, more from the first round here in College Park, number 13, Delaware, taking on number four, Maryland, the host team, the Terps. Very close to Christie's heart, of course. She was a great star here on this very campus. It's not a Friday, but it's a flashback every time I come back to campus. But with just how exciting it is to, to see the fans, Dave, back in the building. Yes. And that's just so exciting. And they're going to have a nice crowd as well. They always do. Kitley to the paint. Draws two, three most of the time. Got the shot up, and it went anyway. Not much you can do with Elizabeth Kitley when she's right in front of the rim in that restricted area at 6'6", shooting 58% from the floor. You've got to just take touches away from her. And 12 of their 18 have come in the paint for the Hokies. Minute 40 here in the first. Outside it's Spray, who will kick it. C lets fly and knocks down a three-pointer. That's her second of the afternoon, and you saw the penetration to the kick. That is their M.O. That's what they want to do to create space to let those three balls fly. Get Lee, the All-America, looking like it. She had 34 against Florida State. She had an 18 rebound game against Wake Forest. Had a six block game against Virginia. Talk about well-rounded. Legit. That's why she's the ACC Player of the Year, and Kenny Brooks said, Hey, she had this drill that she was supposed to make 60 shots. She made 59 of them and was distraught when she missed that last one, like she had missed them all. Well, Liz draining a three. Florida Gulf Coast continues to knock them down all of a sudden after a bit of a chilly start. And isn't that the danger if you're the Hokies as they start to get rolling? They're now five out of 14. But we're almost at the end of the first quarter. They've already attempted 14 threes as Kitley can't hit it. Which is why they've attempted Almost 1,100 threes this season. I mean, that is part of their analytics. And Carl Smesco said, hey, the game has caught up with what we've been doing for years. Certainly feels that way. Shot clock at 12. List directing traffic. Back off for C. Shot clock down to five. She dribbles out beyond the three-point line. Shot clock down to one. And hits it just as they draw it up on top 24 to 20 and the heave at the horn at the end of the first quarter so they caught fire florida gulf coast hitting their last three triples and it's money in the bank for the eagles well, we knew that it was going to be a battle. The ACC Player of the Year, Elizabeth Kitley, knocking in that mid-range, but Florida Gulf Coast, a deep water triple for C, her third of the afternoon. Well, Florida Gulf Coast has taken 18 shots. Christy, 15 of them are three-pointers. I love it. Let it fly. You have the freedom to pop shots. Go ahead. If you're efficient with it, Carl Semesco has no problem. And they are knocking them in. Virginia Tech, they worked on switching on perimeter handoffs and ball screens. But they've got to shore up getting a hand in the faces of these three-point shooters. So how about on a pace to get off 60 three-point <laughs> shots? In an NCAA tournament game, just remarkable. They have such confidence in it. Absolutely. And that's what it is. I mean, we listened to the players at the press conference yesterday, and they were saying, we are bought in. We are locked into the game plan and what we need to do. So quickly on the attack, Shepard, the Hokies' all-time leading scorer. Almost 1,900 career points. They really need her today in a big way. 
Along with Kitley, of course. That was their first triple. Here comes one from List and a misfire. Well, I love Shepard's game. Her stroke is so pure. Just her mechanics with her shot. It's so much fun to watch her get to her spots and let that three fly. 1,800 points for her in her career. Is he grabbing the miss? Still draws so much attention every time she touches it. But she drops in another one. She's got a dozen. So 25-24 the Hokies. Morehouse with a kick. Just getting underway. Second quarter here at Maryland. At College Park and a beautiful campus here. List up against the 6-6 Kidley. Make you think about it. She's not going to block that shot, but boy, you're not going to put it right Bell. in her way. Yeah, she forgot about the shot clock there and kicked it as the shot clock expired. So a violation there by the Eagles. The great defense by Virginia Tech. And they shored up that painted area. They did a good job defending the penetration and kick out action. They were there on the catch, not after it's caught and halfway up into the shot. Love the idea of these first couple of rounds being on campus like this. I think it's the best. It's beautiful. And I know the fans appreciate it as well. Take it away by Florida Gulf Coast. They have seven assists on nine baskets to this point. And Kitley grabbing another misfire. Lining up a long one, King. A very good shooter out there, 40%, but not this time. Virginia Tech, the five seed. Florida Gulf Coast, the number 12 seed. And with three pointers like that, they wonder why. And with all the wins, 29 wins, they wonder why they're a number 12. And Kenny Brooks was wondering the same thing. He said, that is not a 12 seeded team. They are solid. They make you pay. And the style of their game is very unicorn-esque, is what he described it as. Baines lunging, can't get to it, thrown away by the Hokies. Now, Florida Gulf Coast, six points away from being 31-0 right now. Think about that. They have lost exactly one game since the 1st of December, and that was by three points to Stetson. So they were that close to being perfect right now. It's insane, and they have some great wins under their belt against LSU, against Michigan State. In overtime, this is a solid squad. There's a double stagger on that weak side, trying to free up yet another three. Morehouse swooping inside, but can't finish it. Well, I got baited into the three game, too, and they went for a deuce. Amor runs right into Greg, your teammate. Trailer will set it up now. Here in the second quarter, she'll pull up and pop and can't knock it down. Morehouse looking to penetrate again off the window, but no. She is so quick. Dave, her crossover, and I know Carl Semesco said yesterday we're not going to do a lot of silly stuff, a lot of crossovers and and one mixtape stuff. It was funny yesterday. He was talking about that. He said, let's get serious for a minute. Enough of that, at least for a little while. <laughs> right, but that one was pretty nice. It's going to be on the baseline, and they will turn it over back to the Eagles. So a couple of turnovers here for Kenny Brooks' team. That's five in the game. Kenny had a long, outstanding run at James Madison, which included seven consecutive seasons of at least 25 wins and six trips to the NCAA tournament. And just an amazing run there. And just back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back titles in the CAA. Morehouse, yes, will knock that one down. And after that quick first step, she has four points. And he's the father of three daughters as well, so he's a girl dad, has both of his older daughters in tow, helping out with the team. Look at two. He's a very lucky man. Absolutely. Baines will gather it, and they will set it up here with 10 to shoot. Florida Gulf Coast up by four. Amor will lift. Yes, knocking down a three. Well, you saw Florida Gulf Coast switch on that, but then recover, but it was too late. That shot was already in motion. The defense, I thought, was good. Just a better shot. She takes a lot of them, too. 354 shots, 240 from three-point land. So the Eagles on the attack. Of course, out of Fort Myers, Florida. 
There is the quick guard Morehouse again. Kind of taken over here the last several possessions. Well, she's got some roller skates or something on because she is just getting by with her explosiveness on that first step. And that's where she wins at the rim. And she can be very explosive. She had a 33-point game against Eastern Kentucky. So she can take it over. Great handing off for Shepard. It's been a little quiet here so far. That's a good way to get noisy, drilling a three. Oh, that was loud. Coming into this game, 399 threes, which led the ACC this season. So just a staunch weapon from the outside for the Hokies. And she passed Louisville's Asia Durr to become the ACC's all-time three-point leader. Morehouse again. Pretty good battle there up against Amor. Shot clock down to five. Tough drive, difficult angle by Hackley. Well defended by the Hokies. Taylor outside the three-point line. She'll drive it now down the lane. That's a nice move with that left hand. Very smooth. And you could see that she was surveying. And she was looking to give the ball up, but the best option was to keep it. Morehouse left it a little short. Hokies there to recover. Now Kitley has been out of the game for a little while. And a 33-31 lead for Virginia Tech. Downtown Shepard off the iron. Well, this game is what it's supposed to do right here offensively just a two-point game for Virginia Tech Shepard giving you a jab step before knocking in that three and then trailer get downhill and kissing it off the glass for two let's take a look at how Elizabeth Kitley is achieving the impossible brought to you by Adidas Liz Kitley she has scored over 20 points 12 times this season, and this is why she does her work early. Check the footwork, reverse pivot, bring it back. Crowded area still gets the shot up and in. But this is my favorite right here. Watch her doing her work to get to the glass. You don't get a touch in the quarter court. Don't complain about it. Get to the offensive boards and grab the ball and put it up. We There's found always a, a way. We found this out firsthand yesterday, you and I talking with her. You, you want to embarrass her? Make her face turn red. Tell her she's really good at something. <laughs> That's right. Because That's she's it. a very, very humble athlete. Way downtown. Phils. And right out of the timeout, Kirsty Phils, the standout 5'9 grad, averaging about nine a game. She already has six. She was so tough-minded yesterday in practice. And just listening to the way she was talking about approaching this game and the opportunity to compete, she's ready. Kitley with a nice soft touch from mid-range. And the All-American has the Hokies in front by one. She has 14. And she has had an outstanding first half here in the NCAA tournament. Ganane and Kitley, now these two are great friends, two great stars in NCAA basketball. And that's why it was so hard for Liz Kitley to miss that game against NC State because of their bond from the same hometown. They all played on the same AAU team. Kayla King's dad, Tom, was their coach on their AAU team. And I want to know what their record was because, wow, that's a great team right there. Do you ever lose? <laughs> I mean, are you Honestly. ever trailing in a game? It's a trifecta. Or the Gulf Coast on the attack again. Bills into the lane going up against the 6-6 center. Another shot turned away by presence alone. Morehouse, the senior, thought better of it as well. Shot clock down to six and up and in for two. So they stayed with it again to your point earlier in the game. It's not all about threes. Not. Cecil able to knock down a two pointer. Yeah. And that's why, you know, they lull you to sleep with their exploits. But boy, you better stay awake up to that line on the back side defensively or you're going to get crushed with twos. Kidley there in the baseline. No basket fouled before the shot with 2.11 to go before halftime. And Ralph and Loretta Kitley on hand. She talked a lot about the relationship with her folks and how close she is to her dad who coached her for so long. And, and now he's like, you know, I've got 
nothing to say. Right. I'm just watching and enjoying. You're being coached at a very high level. You've become a great player. A lot of fun to watch. Speaking of which, Asia Shepard right on target. Well, I love that. Ralph was the principal at Liz's high school and Kayla King and her, they both won two state titles there in high school. But can you imagine that, having your dad as the principal at, at your high school? I, you have to be perfect. Yes, you do. But he holds her accountable on the rebounding, which is why I love that view of her working for that offensive board. Bell giving it a look to heave and can't knock it down. Shot clock was in play there. It was down to two. Well, this has been, as we anticipated, a fun first half to really good basketball teams. It is what we thought it would be. I mean, it feels like the momentum is for Virginia Tech, but it's a one-point game or a two-point game. Phil can't hit that. And out it goes right back over to the Hokies. And coming up at halftime, Degree in the studio with L, Rebecca, and Nikki. Howard against South Carolina, Creighton against Colorado. UConn will play tomorrow. Your thoughts on Connecticut getting healthy at the right time? Well, I think you just said it. It's the right time for them all to come together. Paige Beckers, before her injury, was averaging just under 22 points a game. In her return, only six points a game, but they don't need her to be that scorer that she was. There are three points better with her on the court as a team. Amor with a scoop. No. Kitley corrals it and two. Great hands. Liz Kitley has great hands inside. And Kenny Brooks said she is probably the most pounded on player in there in terms of crowding her space, but somehow finding a way. Great hands, great half, 16 points. This is a way downtown and another triple for the Eagles. And she has eight. And it's a one point game as we close in on a very entertaining end of the half. And a whistle with 7.7 .7 to go off the basketball. And a foul will go against Emma List, the Florida Gulf Coast, and her first. List was snaking through with Shepard, but the freedom of movement rule was not in place there. I think there was some hand checking going on on those cuts. So about eight seconds to get one up. Amor, here's Shepard turning and firing, and that won't drop. So that'll be the end of the first half. That was fun. And it's anybody's game as we head to halftime. Keep your seatbelt on on this roller coaster ride that this game has been in the first half. Just a one point game in favor of Virginia Tech. Fun stuff. Well, this Virginia Tech team is hustling and fighting. And Florida Gulf Coast, though, they're not going away easily. They're staying persistent and resilient. Welcome back to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. We're ready for the second half between the Eagles and the Hokies. Virginia Tech up by one on Florida Gulf Coast. We share information, our broadcast teams, and people are asking us, is Elizabeth Kitley healthy enough to play? That was before the game. As you look, look at our bracket here in the Spokane region, and I'll tell you what, she is ready to play, and she is 100% by all accounts because she has 16 in the first half. On 7 of 11 shooting, so she's doing it in an efficient way to say the least, almost at her 17-point average in the first half with those 16 points, but Elizabeth Kitley fundamentally sound with her footwork. Look at her establishing herself, doesn't get the touch there, makes her own touch on the offensive glass, gets it, puts it back in. She has been a problem for Florida Gulf Coast. But for the Eagles, penetration and kick out. They have 10 assists on 15 made shots in that first half. But it's not all about connecting the dots. You give space, they're going to make you pay in your eye for three from range. Nine of 23 for Florida Gulf Coast. 23, <laughs> you said. 23 three-point attempts. That has us looking up the record, by the way, for attempts in an NCAA tournament, which is 57. 
They could easily get that at this pace. Kristen Bell had a couple of quick fouls, but she has recovered. And two points right away for the Eagles. Won 29 games during the season and the A-Sun tournament, which they won. 29 and 2. They did not attempt a foul shot in the first half. Virginia Tech four for four. Underneath, spinning off the iron. Kitley can't get it to go. But we'll be at the line as we begin the second half. That is number three on Bell. We were just talking about those fouls, and now a third. She picked up two very early within the first five minutes of the game, came out for about a minute and a half, and Carl Semesco, the head coach at Florida Gulf Coast, put her back on the floor, and she stayed disciplined. But now with this early third foul, 30 seconds, Dave, into the second half, that's a conundrum. Now, if you're just joining us, that's one of the great players in the country, the junior from Ohio, honorable mention All-America, 26 career double-doubles, 23.7 rebounds a game. And in foul trouble for Florida Gulf Coast. A highly entertaining first half here at College Park. List on the move and kicks it out for Phils. Really got going with her three-pointers. Morehouse slamming on the brakes. List cuts loose. That won't drop. But you can tell with their spacing what shots they want out of their offense. So no disappointment. You got to have amnesia because that shot was what they wanted to take. Trailer and short with that, but draws the foul on the floor. A 1,000 point score, Purdue transfer. 8.48 to go here in the third. That'll go against Kendall Spray, number one on the guard. Non shooting foul. And batted away, intended for Kitley. A great read defensively by Florida Gulf Coast. You can tell they've watched film. They know this action is coming to Kitley on the weak side on that flat line. Hand in the passing lane. Your honest opinion, does Florida Gulf Coast look like a 12 seed to you? N-O. No. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Whistle and a foul here. 8.43 left in the quarter. And it will go the other way. And that big question mark as Kidley picks up the foul. About that 12 seed. Well, Charlie has him as an 8. They rank number 23 in America. Quick strike underneath, they get it down low for Phils and two. And I was going to say, and look at that play, to go along with all what we were just saying about them being more talented than what a 12 seed you would think would look like. And with Charlie Cream having them at an eight, that has a lot of weight to it as well. Considerably higher. Baines turns the fire and knocks it down. Lefty stroke from the high post there. Well, four ties, 14 lead changes in this one, and that continues. Way downtown is Phils. She's found her range. It's an entire vibe. Their band, their bench, their cheerleaders, their fans that they have I'm, here. I'm glad you brought up the band, Christy, because they've got a marvelous band. In, in fact, both schools do. There's, there's sort of been a band battle back and forth here mm -hmm. at College Park today. Very, very fun. I saw your shoulder leaning a little oh, bit yeah. to that Florida Golf Coast. Just when ever so Michael slightly, Jackson yeah. <laughs> little, little bill. That's little that's something. me right there. <laughs> Seven forty left in the quarter, and a two-point game. Foul number two on Phils. And the Hokies to check it in. Kitley will turn and knocks it down. So good with that shot. 17 points, 10 rebounds a game, but she has 20 points in this one. She does it simply. She doesn't complicate her motions or her mechanics on her shot. Her footwork impeccable in the paint. Bell spinning, launching. Couldn't get the roll, but she'll be at the foul. Kirsten Bell to shoot. When you're trying so hard to take things away, you're going to be beaten back door. Just a hard cut with purpose there for Florida Gulf Coast and the kick out. Nobody home defensively to contest it with the stick arm. Disrupting that shooting pocket area. Not there. You've got to be there for this team. 
Bell rattles in the first, the very first foul shot all day for FGCU. And she makes one of two. Rebound taken away by Greg. And here come the Hokies. Well, Kenny Brooks, the head coach for Virginia Tech, he told us yesterday, they shoot so many threes, and I can't pull my hair out every time they get one to fall, but they come in bunches, so they have to do their due diligence with ball pressure first, so they're not getting the clean passes to those shots, but they also have to get tighter on those three-point attempts by the Eagles. Amor with the shot clock winding down, kind of forced that one, though, still had about five seconds. On the cut, and up and in for Spray. So not just outside, she can get in there, too. All five players are in constant movement. And Carl Smusco yesterday said, you know when you see somebody running through an airport, you pay attention to that person, right? So that could be a decoy, but that next cut is going to be the one that kills you. We've seen you and I late for a couple flights, <laughs> I think. Running in the airport is no good, especially for my right knee. is not a good thing. Kitley with a miss. You're lucky it's just a knee, Christy. <laughs> Bell, nice move, went to that right hand and banked it in. Ooh, she is so tough. And don't let her see that ball drop through the net. Do you hear me? She had 32 points in a win over LSU earlier this season. She can go completely off. The knee looks fine, getting with a turn. No, and Bell with a rebound. Something she can do as well. Seven rebounds again. This is the largest lead for the Eagles. Cecil blown right by, but cannot finish it. She just didn't square up. It was a great decision, but you got to square your shoulders to the backboard and put it up and put your wrist toward the glass and finish. Now Florida Gulf Coast with a surge here, looking for their 30th win of the season. Okies at 23 and 9, went 13 and 5 in the ACC, and the three-pointer won't drop. It comes right to Kitley. Up she goes, and that will not go down. Looks like she lost her step there inside and maybe lost possession as well, which is why it wasn't whistle to travel there. Bell upset the screen. Warhouse right by everybody for two. Boy, she's been a big factor in this game. Huge factor. And a timeout, Kenny Brooks and the Hokies. Kirsten Bell, she is a problem, and you can ring her bell and get her, and as a decoy there on the pick and roll, and Morehouse getting downhill is always quick, fast, and a hurry. Everybody trying to get to Minneapolis. The NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One continues. Sweet 16 and Elite 8, March 25 through the 28th, then the Final Four, and a championship on ESPN Sunday, April 3rd, in prime time on ESPN. Minnesota nice, they call it, the folks there. Everyone's got a smile, everyone's delighted, and they are so happy to have the Final Four coming their way. Florida Gulf Coast. Five for six in the paint in the third. So, as you said, switching things up. Absolutely. In the first half, Virginia Tech had a 20 to 12 advantage in paint points. In the second half, it's a 10 to 2 advantage for Florida Gulf Coast there. Deasia Gregg connects from three point land. So that snaps an 8 0 run by the Eagles, who have not turned the ball over once, but one time. None in the second half, one time in the game, and that's going to be an offensive foul. As Morehouse went plowing in there. 53 49, our score with 419 left here in the third at College Park. Well, last Saturday, the number seven seed Virginia Tech men's basketball team, a scintillating run to the ACC tournament title. Coach K unhappy about that result, but Hunter Couture was amazing. Best game of his career, 31, seven out of nine from three-point land. What a run that was for them. The NCAA Men's Basketball Championship, first round continues tonight on CBS, TBS, TNT, and True TV. More information on the tournament and game times and listings, go to NCAA.com. The best time of the year, oh my goodness. bar none. Oh, yes. I love it. Floyd Brooks there, 
She and Hunter, they're dating. They're an item. I did not know that. Yeah. That's some tea. I have coffee here, but that's tea for us <laughs> for right not now. Us wow. Not usually Aww. my line, but, you know, <laughs> I'll hop in if I have a good piece of information. A couple of great kids. Cute. Hit Lee on the turn. And yeah, no. And she has cooled off a little bit, having a great game nonetheless with 20 points. And that's going to be a blocking foul, 352 to go in the quarter. You can tell the pace for Florida Gulf Coast right now is to their liking. They want to push tempo. Full court bounce passes in transition is what it's about. It. Kenny Brooks said, hey, we have to be back and established and ready to defend. That time was it for that block. Amor her first. Bell tiptoe on the line, got it free. Houston Bell, she's starting to heat up. Yes, indeed, she is. That's a three. Ooh, ooh we. Oh, here she comes. Kirsten Bell is not playing games in this NCAA tournament. She thrives in big moments. She wants it. And suddenly has 12. 56 49 over the top. Kitley and draws a foul. Kidley back to the line where she makes 73% back to the Bell triple. Kirsten Bell right here. She's going to measure you up, give you a little jab fake to get some space to release that shot. Team screaming at her to keep going. Kirsten Bell told us, hey, this is a tightly knit team. Like they know that they're a mid-major team and they thrive in moments like this when they can be on the national stage, when they can prove themselves. And right now, they're doing a great job of that. And maybe they don't wear that chip 24-7. Right. But it's there. It's there. Of uh, being a 12 seed with all that they have done. Mm -hmm. And you can tell it is driving them. It's a motivating factor. They have something to prove. Every possession. It's not just about the game or whatever. It's about every single possession. You can tell they want to prove something. Bell on the move off the window, no. Greg with the rebound, and the Hokies trying to cut into a six-point deficit. Trailer up high. Gitley calling for it. Back out for King. Front rim bit. She's a very good three-point shooter, 40%. No double team came for Kitley. I thought she was going to go baseline. Another blocking foul. And once again, it was Amor hitting the deck. You know, Florida Gulf Coast, they don't sweat the big names. They, they certainly don't. They didn't against LSU early in the year, beat them 88-74. And then in a great game in double overtime against Michigan State in December. Well, that was Kim Mulkey's first game to coach at LSU this season. And Kirsten Bell said, hey, if we can beat LSU, we can have a challenge with Michigan State as well, and it took overtime, but they got that done, and Nia Cloudon for Michigan State had 50 points in that game. Amor went down on the seat of her pants, and that's a turnover. Commanding the ball, Phils, who's had a hot hand in this one. Spray gave up the dribble. There's that two-man game action with Bell. Bell to the paint, swooping in. Couldn't finish it. Grabs her own miss. Wild shot there. She was just off balance. She was looking for a foul, but you've got to make the shot first. If the foul comes, it comes, but you can't force the foul without committing to making that shot first. NCAA tournament, round one, and a tight one here at Maryland, and a whistle. And the Terps on this floor against Delaware in the game to follow. We'll have that for you this afternoon. Kirsty Phils just picked up her fourth foul for Florida Gulf Coast. Another issue, and both of them are going out. Bell has the three fouls. And Phils now with four. And Kitley to the line. 35 career double doubles, 16 of them this season for the All American and the ACC Player of the Year. Well, Kenny Brooks said that she has transformed their winning culture there. And that says a lot. That speaks volumes to who she is and what she stands for. She has 22 to lead all scorers. Five-point game. It was 
working well for Florida Gulf Coast was getting to that elbow area. You can see Morehouse is going to try it. But there's Kitley in there at 6'6. Six, six. Has lost it and poked out of bounds with four seconds to go in the shot clock with a minute 15 left in the quarter. And the Eagles to maintain possession. In for spray, she'll cut that one loose and banked it in. Off the glass and somehow it went. Carl Smesco shaking his head and I'm saying, what in the wild world of sports is that? Oh my. I mean, she's a great three-point shooter. Phenomenal, but you gotta call that. Yeah, she had some spin on that ball. Trailer down the lane will draw the foul. Take another look at this one. Only four seconds to shoot. She let it fly. Look at it. It doesn't even have good rotation on it. And hit the top of the glass outside of the square and dropped in. She'll take it, put it in the bag, put it in the duffel bag, and let's go. <laughs> 460 plus threes for her. She's number four all time. The NCAA record is 497, held by Ohio State's Kelsey Mitchell. That was four years ago. On the day, Florida Gulf Coast is 12 for 28 from three. That's 43%. And their magic number is 44%. That's what Carl has told them all season long. That's the number we're shooting for. Absolutely. And they're not going to take any in the mid range. They're going to, you know, they want to take those threes. And we take that away. They want to get by and get downhill like Morehouse is trying to on the switch. Knox to drive it. Off the fake. Lost her balance and turned it over to Amor. Just their third turnover. She'll drive it. That won't fall. Kitley beating everyone down the other end, and she will be at the line. Elizabeth Kitley to the line. 6'6", six, six, Junior. Elizabeth Kitley came barreling down the paint. And that's what you do in fast breaks. You don't just trust that that first shot's going to fall. You get down there and stick your nose in and get to the offensive board. She's done a tremendous job of getting second and third opportunities today for the Hokies. She's six of eight at the line, so now seven out of nine. Emma List with her second personal. Well, everything's 50-50. It's not just the loose basketball on the ground, right? The rebounds are 50-50. Everything is 50-50. There's a chance if you go. If you don't go, you have no chance. Emily Lytle back on. The grad out of Memphis. 24 points and counting for Kitley, who's had a terrific day. Will it be enough, though? Florida Gulf Coast. With the basketball up 59-54, final seconds of the third quarter. Carlos Musco calling out the set that he wants here at this juncture. Morehouse on the drive, and a whistle as well, and she'll be at the line. Lightning quick. And looking for a three-point play. Mighty Mouse. Morehouse. Getting downhill off the screening action from Bell, drawing defense. Some contact there on the drive. Bench goes crazy, and you love to see it. They're playing with supreme confidence right now. Three-point play, and that will go the other way. Amor with a another tumble. She's spending a lot of time on the hardwood. And that is number four on Bell. Uh, she was trying to get to it, but the key to getting a steal is to get to the ball line instead of going straight to the body. You go to the ball line, you don't make contact. So Bell has to hit the bench here just four seconds before the end of the third quarter. Amor to the line, drops it in. And for the second time today, we're going to say, with one of the great players in the country on the bench for Florida Gulf Coast, it's a giant story. Well, that's huge. It was the best of times with Morehouse's three-point play and the worst of times with that foul. Bills and Bell both with four. And that is huge for the Eagles. 12 out of 28 beyond the three-point line. And able to hit some huge, huge shot spray to drop that one in off the backboard. Somehow it went. And the Eagles love it. They are in front as we head to the fourth quarter. And after Sunday, someone's heading 
to beautiful Spokane from our location. In the meantime, Kirsten Bell just wants to get back on the floor. Christy, four fouls. We still have Maryland and Delaware to come, the four and the 13 on ESPNU at 5 o'clock. And I know it is so tough for her to sit there right now coming into the fourth quarter with the lead for her team. She knows how invaluable her presence is on the court. Kitley working on a 24-point game, swinging inside and adds to that. 62-58 at halftime. You looked at me and said, are we, are we headed for a buzzer beater? Is that a possibility? Well, very much right now. I think that's just what I really want to see. I don't yes. know. I'm ready for the magical madness of March. Morehouse on the dribble. Here's List. Got a good look. And rebounded away by Trailer. Kidley, by the way, 9 of 17. Another touch. She may get it every time down. And two more for her. As she has hit 10 out of 18. As she should get a touch. There's no double team coming off of her because the shooters that are surrounding her on the strong side. Way downtown and off the iron, but it hung for a while. Spray with a attempted a three-pointer, 62 to 60, and it'll go the other way and be Hokie's ball here. Back to Kitley's last look. Well, just look at her. She's single covered down in the paint. Nobody's there to crowd her space. That's free and easy. You're 6'6", six, six, the defender's behind you. And that's all day long. Give it to her again. That's right. Looking to tie it up. Left it short. Gathers and hits another one. I mean, that's easy money down in the paint. Seven offensive rebounds now for Virginia Tech. 10 to 0 in second chance points. Morales quickly putting Florida Gulf Coast back in front. She is 13, 64, 62. Bell coming back on here in a moment. Kitley down low. Yes, and she'll be at the line. Elizabeth Kitley showing you what an All American is made of. And you can see where she got that fire in the belly. Her parents are up. Cheering for their baby girl right there, getting the contact. <laughs> Look at mom, way to go. Woohoo! That's right, hands in the air. That's your baby. She has 12 field goals, Christy, at this point. The rest of the Hokies have hit 11 mm. as a team, and around and out. Couldn't finish the three point play. We are tied at 64. <laughs> Bell back in quickly, left it short. It's right on line, though. You could tell the pick and pop game is there. It's not just a pick and roll two man action for Florida Gulf Coast when Bell is involved. Elizabeth Kitley's career high, by the way, is 34 points. She did that against Florida State this season. And thrown away as they try to get it down low to her. Bell, you see, short with the triple. Those transition threes have just been golden all season long for the Eagles. That one just not there, but the purpose and the intention behind that was right where they want it. They just have to get shots to fall right here. Shepard, shot clock at nine. Kitley with a look. Two more for her, 32 points. What a machine Elizabeth Kitley has been this afternoon. Under seven minutes to go. 34 points for Kitley. And a quick strike for Florida Gulf Coast and Bell with 14. Kirsten Bell had to hang in the air because of the long arms inside by Kitley. Shepard. Kitley again on the spin. And a foul, too. She goes to the line. And a new career high for her with 36 points. Just keep putting the ball right back down inside. Defense playing straight behind. Bell tries to come over to contest it. 
68 66 the Hokies. So 629 to go here in the fourth. Kirsty Phils, by the way, picked up a foul. So she is gone. That's number five. Elizabeth Kidley continues to have an incredible game, and the Hokies lead it by two. A look at our Capital One rewarding performance. I should say so. Kitley's been amazing. Well, she has been fantastic. The ACC Player of the Year, 15 double doubles coming into this game. Six of seven from the floor in the fourth quarter. Oh my goodness, she has just gone to work. Single coverage down inside. She has taken full advantage and gotten herself to the line as well. 36 points, a career high to the line here. Eight rebounds as well. And has really benefited from the two weeks since the ACC tournament semifinal, allowing that injury to recover to that shoulder. No question about it. And we asked her about that after their practice yesterday, and she said, I was really having a hard time sitting there knowing that my team needed me on the bench, and she has just unleashed all of that fire and passion this afternoon. Trailer picks up her second foul, trying to hold up Kirsten Bell. Who missed nine games herself this season, but was still named the A-Sun Player of the Year for the second year in a row. Morehouse, free to Phils. Phils on the baseline, and guess who played some terrific defense? Kitley with the block. Kitley right there. She's had nine games this season where she's had four or more blocks. We talk about her offensive prowess, her ability to get almost 10 rebounds a game, but she is a staunch defender, was on the ACC defensive team this season as well. Out of the double, finds trailer. That won't drop. Still a two-point lead for the Hokies. Maryland and Delaware to follow on this court here on ESPNU as the tournament is underway and underway here in the Spokane region at College Park, Maryland with a dandy today. Maryland is 14-1 at home. It's going to be a great game between two great teams. C got a good look. Florida Gulf Coast. Tremendous with those three pointers. They've taken over 1,100 this season. Just incredible. Well, they've done a good job in the second half of flipping the script and going for twos. Their last couple of come up empty from the outside. Maybe they should go back to getting into the paint. Kitley, not this time. 68 66. Bell, yes! Kirsten Bell. Oh, we mentioned the three pointers, and she has 17 points. Or not. Keep letting it fly. <laughs> Shoot the threes, ladies. You let them go. One point game. Shepard launches. No, that didn't touch anything. And it's going to be turned over back to Florida Gulf Coast. They lead 69 68. Oh, look at this view. Kirsten Bell stopping on a dime, got her feet set, flicked the wrist, and got that triple to go over Kitley from the outside. Maryland waiting in the wings to take their floor. They always draw good crowds here. What a great tradition of basketball for Maryland. 13 seed Delaware looking for a major upset. 17 lead changes in this one. Bell short on that one. Nine times the game has been tied. Now the Hokies looking to retake the lead. Coming up on four minutes left and picked off by Bell. And the star for Florida Gulf Coast flips it up and a blocking foul. And she will be at the line. Well, Kirsten Bell is from Ohio. She transferred from Ohio State. But during her time in high school, she was a three-time Ohio Miss Basketball in 2017 through 19, and so was LeBron James. LeBron James came to see Kirsten Bell play in high school, and she just dropped a casual 38 points at nine rebounds, five assists, something slight like that. Oh, hum. But I mean, you know, we asked her yesterday, does she still keep in touch with LeBron? And she said, no, not since that time, but I will soon because she's anticipating a run to the WNBA after the NCAA tournament, of course. Yes, indeed. She's declared for the draft. In fact, that was the day she got hurt mm -hmm. when she injured that knee. Yes. She has 19 points. 
71 68 the Eagles with the lead Kitley fires she drops in two more 38 points that is a Virginia Tech school record she has just been spectacular this afternoon a three on the way and drilled home by Emma List Florida Gulf Coast up by four. 319 to go and a foul against the Eagles. And that'll be on C. A Naismith Women's College Basketball Player of the Year semifinalist, Elizabeth Kitley, right there. Just a reverse pivot into a sweet, soft touch on that jumper. And then the drive and kick. That is what Florida Gulf Coast has been able to do so incredibly well here this afternoon. Four point lead, three minutes. I love it. They've made 14 out of 36 beyond the arc. Oh, man. Gitley again wants it. Amor to the baseline. Shot clock at six. Here's Greg to fire. Hits it. And a timeout. Two point game, exactly three minutes to go. And down the stretch, we come in a terrific game. This has been a back and forth affair, especially in the last couple of minutes here. It's this chestnut checkers. And you love to see it in March. Back and forth we go. Can't get it into Kitley. Rising, firing, and knocking it in. For the Hokies is Greg. So Virginia Tech fourth quarter. Kitley just amazing. 14 points. Rest of the team a total of two. She has 38 points in the game on 15 of 25 shooting. Eight out of 12 at the foul line. Hmm. But right now it has not been enough. They are down by two. And Florida Gulf Coast has the ball. Bell can't hit the triple. They were counting on the switching defenses there. Bell had Kitley on her once again on that switch to the outside. Just didn't have the legs under that shot. A whistle here with exactly two and a half minutes to play. And Kitley right in the heart of the Hokies attack. Cecil picks up the personal foul. Amor will back it away. Trailer. Trying to drive it and lost her foot and got up and somehow kept the basketball. Greg leaning in. Yes, she's hit a couple of big shots here. Her mom Shannon played at West Virginia and they must have been out on the driveway getting some shots because that one was tough in traffic. She has seven, 74 apiece. Morehouse, back for Bell. Bell to the paint and around and out. Boy, was in the cylinder. Thought she was going to come back baseline. And I think she thought someone was there to meet her, and no one was there. Here's Shepard. Shot clock at 10. Too strong. Rebounded away by Florida Gulf Coast and Kendall Spray. And they will take their time here. The post. Carlos Mesco calling out in action. See if they execute it. Bell to the lane again. Yes! She puts the Eagles in front at 21 points for Kirsten Bell. Lord have mercy. That was a tough move at a critical time. Under a minute. Over the top, Kitley. Kitley, no this time. She hasn't missed many. Under 45 seconds to go. Florida Gulf Coast. 
on top 76 74 and they take a timeout 38 seconds left if the little hairs on the back of your neck aren't standing up like mine then what are you doing watching basketball in march this is insanely good kirsten bell in critical foul trouble with four it just gets downhill and does the dance right here turns and gets into the painted area and kisses it off the backboard that's a big time move great players play great don't they she wants the ball and that's the key make or miss she wants the ball so here's our reset both sides with two timeouts remaining florida gulf coast has the all-important possession arrow and the Hokies with two fouls to give two-point game a fitting ending to it has been a wonderful basketball game how will it end here in round one Morehouse they want Bell to touch it again she swings it here comes C shot got it a giant three-pointer from a team that relies on the three like nobody's business. 79-74 with 26 seconds to go. That's their 16 made three. Oh my. Oh my. Florida Gulf Coast, the Eagles, they spread you out. And they knock in threes. That is the game plan and they are executing to perfection it's march and they know it chest bump the vibe is high for the eagles of florida gulf coast university dave man listen i knew this was going to be a great battle both teams love the threes but wow virginia tech right now they've got to come up with a quick score and I would say something to the basket and then try to get it back. Well, the Eagles with the haymaker on top 79-74. Over the top, it's Kitley. Trying to answer on the back down. Got it to go with 22 seconds left. 79-76, Morehouse getting free across midcourt and draws the foul. 40 points for Elizabeth Kitley. But for Kenny Brooks, thus far it has not been enough. 18.6 left. Well, we knew it had to be a quick score situation for Virginia Tech. And then with Kitley and her ability to score efficiently well today, you knew it was going to her. We mentioned they had a couple of fouls to give. 40 points, that's a school record, 16 of 27. Here's to about 21 points. They have both had huge games. And another foul. 79-76. Trying to force them to the line. Got it in for Spray, and she gets fouled by Asia Shepard, and now she's off to shoot with 16 seconds to go. Spray, by the way, a 77% foul shooter. She has scored almost 2,000 career points. She was pumping up the crowd after that last triple as well. She's got the spirit. You have not had to pump up that band. <laughs> They've been on fire since an hour before the game. Absolutely. We Florida love it. Gulf Coast. We love it. Looking to make it 81-76. Very cool at that line. Florida Gulf Coast. I think underrated by everybody who has not seen them play. You see them play in five minutes, you realize that 12 seed, I'm sorry. Also underrated by and everybody. Just joining us, they're three pointers as you knew they would. They have been a huge factor. They have been a major factor, especially down the stretch. At the beginning of the second half, they went into the painted area and got some shots, but they've gone back to what has gotten them here, and that has been their proficiency, even off the glass like that, from range. And it is a critical juncture here. If they get a quick stop, and do you foul here? I mean, they'll put them on the line and get it back, and then to extend the game. Would you? Yes. Mm -hmm. I would do it. Yep, one to give and get the ball back. 
they're going to foul you. Make your free throws. And that shows more trust in your team as well. Like, I trust that they're going to go right there and make their free throws just like she did on the last one. Well, an incredibly competitive, vastly entertaining first round game here in College Park, Maryland. I think some of the fans who are gathering to see Maryland and Delaware, they really got wrapped up in this game over the last four or five minutes. How could you not? Hokies to check it in. Gitley knocked away. She wins it back. There is a whistle. Late foul with 14.4. But it looked like it. I'm looking at Carl Semesco, and he is looking like he didn't want that foul, mm -hmm. which I understand. And it'll be Kitley to the line. A 40 point game for the ACC Player of the Year. Eight out of 12 at the line. And the Hokies fans very, very nervous. Kitley's mom and dad. And another one coming for the 6'6 junior. Look at mom. Mom is struggling. A four point game. And the officials right now at the monitor with 14.4 to go. And not sure what they're looking at at the moment. Maybe a clock issue. Maybe to reset time, not sure. 14.4. And so it will be Elizabeth Kitley at the line for number two. Trying to make it a three point contest. And got the pair. And a quick foul. 42 points for Kitley. 81 78, Florida Gulf Coast. The 12 seed trying to knock off the five seed. And less than 14 seconds away from doing that. And it helps that Spray was already just at the line and made both of her free throws. Let's see if she can do it again. Florida Gulf Coast, her third stop, also Clemson and UT Martin. And really cool at that line. It's just cash. Her wrist is so quick. Florida Gulf Coast, their last win in the tournament was 2018 when they beat Missouri 80 to 70. Quickly, here comes Trailer. And knocked out with 9.4 seconds to go. 83 78. Florida Gulf Coast. Moments away from a victory here in round one. And a the officials will head to the monitor here. The ruling on the court is white ball, the place under review. So in the last two minutes, going to that monitor. You can see all the coaches from Florida Gulf Coast were up, winding that finger around, saying, take a look. One possession can make a huge difference, obviously, here. Take a look. I think it stays with Virginia Tech. Ooh, this view, well, you know what? That's why they're going to. Yes. <laughs> that's why they're doing that. And we're always when you get that second look, you think you're, you're <laughs> absolutely sure. No, wait a minute. No, no. Let's see. Look like C hit it initially, but then did it hit Greg after that? After review, the ruling on the court stands. The game clock is reset to 9.8. So back to 9.8 on the clock. And the Hokies to check it in. Down by five. Quickly, Shepard launches up there. That didn't touch anything. Caught by Bell. She's fouled with 5.6 seconds. And the Eagles flying high here in round one as Bell will go to shoot. How about Carl Semesco? 
609 victories, and surpassed 600 earlier this season. Bell 71% at that line. And number two makes that. 22 points for Kirsten Bell. Had foul trouble early. Amor launching that one and drops in a three. And that is going to do it. 84 81, the final. Florida Gulf Coast, the 12 seed, knocks off the number five, Virginia Tech, despite an amazing performance by Elizabeth Kidley, who wound up with 42 points. That is a school record. But in the end, the Eagles were soaring with their three pointers, and they win it 84 to 81. Outstanding victory. Just an amazing win. 26 of Kidley's 42 points came in the second half alone, but Florida Gulf Coast collectively got the job done in the first round. Carl Tomesco and the Eagles, Kirsten Bell, move ahead. The tears. Some seniors for Virginia Tech. That's always a tough pill to swallow. Yep, Asia Shepard there. Let's bring in Kirsten Bell, who was outstanding down the stretch. Kirsten, congratulations on a marvelous win. I mean, we're sitting here marveling at your team's performance in Virginia Tech. What a basketball game, thank huh? Thank you. Thank you so much, man. It was a good game. Well, you made some huge shots down the stretch. You told us yesterday you want the ball in the big moment. You must have felt that today in a major way. I definitely felt that, man. The first half, I didn't play as well, but my team, you know, they held it down. And the second half, I came out ready to play, you know, make good plays for the team, and, and it helped us, and we won this game. Kirsten, what was going through your mind in the first five minutes of the game when you picked up those two early fouls, and then again, you had those four fouls going into the fourth? I was frustrated, man. Like, I never have two fouls in the first, in the beginning of the game. Um, so it was definitely frustrating for me, but I had to keep my head high because I knew that it mattered for me to keep my head up and give my team energy, and that's what I had to do, and we kept fighting, and that's what I did. That's when we got this win. Kirsten, it's a dangerous thing to underestimate Florida Gulf Coast, I think, isn't it? Yes, definitely. <laughs> you guys came in as the number Number 12 seed. There was a lot of talk about that. How much does that drive you guys? Uh, it definitely drives us a lot. Um, everybody doubted us, um, but you know we stuck together. We got our community, our, our fans, our, our parents, and family. Um, but you know FGCU, we came to play, and, and that's why we won. And now we're going to the next round. Well, it was a marvelous game to watch. A whole lot of fun in the first round. But you're moving on to the second round on Sunday. We want to say congratulations and and a tremendous effort by you, and it mattered the most. Thank you guys so much. Kirsten, thank you. We'll look at that bracket now. As Florida Gulf Coast is on to round number two on Sunday to take on the winner of Maryland and Delaware. And the Eagles made big shots when they had to. And Christy made them at money time. It was so much fun to watch these two teams battle it out. So much fun. We're going to watch Florida Gulf Coast again soon. Well, Elizabeth Kidley scored 42 points. That's an arena record here at Xfinity Center. Not enough in the end. Florida Gulf Coast wins it 84-81. They're moving on.